a bit nervous. I've got Paige Hadley next to me. I'm a bit nervous what you're going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's riff in. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And I've got a rock star on the house today, Paige Hadley, netballer. How are you? I thought you were talking about yourself as the rock star. Oh, no. Like, I, I have that struggle every morning. <laughs> but I get to deal with lovely people like you. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. it's um. You've been up shooting today? Yeah, just done a bit of body BSC shoot, so... Yeah, you've got the rule, don't call it body science. Yeah, I nearly went to call it that. I get it every day. Yeah, so... It's really hard when you started it. Don't want to get in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) So you've been doing a photo shoot? Yeah, done a photo shoot, did some exercises in the gym. Yeah. Hopefully it comes out all good. Oh, well, you've done a lot of stuff with us. It's always looked really good. I don't think that'll be a problem. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Well, that's how it goes. (laughs) Let's chat about you. So let's talk about something really exciting. Who was your first boyfriend? <laughs> Money taking the piss. Didn't, didn't AI come up with that? <laughs> no, nothing in AI, <laughs> hey, like, but you know what? If you say it now, it will go into AI and someone will get it later on for the next one. I'll, I'll give you know, that. You can update I'll AI. Have to, you have to find out where it's come from. <laughs> Let's talk about some real stuff. So you're, uh, you're someone who's balanced career, education and work um, in, the, in, in a really tough time too because – Right now, female sport is in a really cool place in Australia, but you've had, you know, you, you've been one of those people that's worked to make that happen. Like when you, when you look at the handful of quality athletes that have driven what is now, like, like look at the Matilda success and the things that are happening, the Swifts, um, look at the Levi girls, like you guys are just talked about every day now, but you've still managed to, you know, you've got a bachelor of business. Yeah. Business and commerce. Business and commerce. Yeah. yeah. Better than me. You know, I started one of those. <laughs> I got like 20 units done. Couldn't do the last one. It's like, you and know, now look at you. tax law two and uh, account <laughs> three. And I'm like, oh God. So I ended up with an arts degree <laughs> in sociology. Well, look at you yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, it's a laugh. Like that, everyone I tell a laugh when I say that. How, you look at you got now. Yeah, I know. It's pretty fun. I get to sit next to you and chat about stuff. <laughs> so are you actually working at the moment? Um, yeah, so I do bit of work not in that field um i work for an orthopedic surgeon um doing all his billings and admin stuff yep i also do a lot of coaching of young kids coming through with netball um and then obviously play as well hopefully i'll do something with that at the end of my career but yeah now just trying to juggle part-time work coaching um you know training all those sort of can you tell us can you talk us through that struggle because i honestly don't think that a lot of people truly appreciate what you go through to be co-captain of the Swifts, yeah, yep. and fifty international games for Australia under your belt as well. Yeah, like c- can you can you like be really honest with us now? Like, how tough is that? Oh, I think it's like it's honestly crazy. Sometimes I speak to you know your family, and I think if I was you know as you said like co-captain of my club, vice captain of Australia, and I was a male, <laughs> like where I would be and how I would have been able to set up my life. Like if you're a cricketer or something. Um, yeah, like yeah. I, I think, you know, the money that we're earning is okay for now, but the, the day that I don't get a contract or I can't play netball, it's going to be straight into full-time work. Like it's not like, you know, I'm able to set myself up and I just said it's been a challenge. Like I've had to balance study or work or other things outside of, you know, playing netball and um, it, it's been really tough. Like I always think, imagine if, you know, I went to training and, you know, the, like the boys club, you know, you go there and you get fed lunch and, you know, you're there all day and that's your job and you go home and you can switch off where for us I'm going home and I'm going to coaching or I'm opening up the laptop and I'm doing emails or I'm doing work for the doctor or I'm doing something else. So it is tough. I think it's it's all I've ever known though. Like yeah, okay. it's, it's, you know, from where I started, my first contract was $11,000. Um, I was living at home, we were paid six month contracts and I thought, wow, what a cool hobby. Um, so it's come a long way. But it's all I've ever known. I've never known to be a full-time, everything is just netball. I've always had to have balance and life outside of just netball. And how far away is that day for young girls that are aspiring to be you? Oh, look, I hope it's not too far. I think, you know, obviously we went through a really tough time at the end of last year with our pay dispute. Um, and, you know, that was tough. It was like 13 weeks of love of no pay. Um, fighting for you know a revenue share model to come into our sport where you know the more the money that we bring in for fans or memberships or sponsorships that netballers are actually getting a cut of that because at the moment you get nothing so you just get your contract no matter how much money you bring in or how many bums are on seats or how many are watching netball 
none of that went to the players. So we took a big stand and hopefully for the generations to come, that will then benefit them. Obviously for us, it's probably not going to benefit. It's going to be those years to come. But um, look, I hope it's not too far away, I think, obviously, for those players that play internationally that are at the top list of, I guess, at Swifts. But, you know, we're still at a point where the rookie salary is like $48,000. And, you know, for a young kid to move to Sydney, oh, to pay not, rent... You're not living lux in Sydney for 48 grand, You're not you? making much yeah. money. You, you know, it's all gone to rent. Yeah, that's tough, hey? That's really, really... I know that I've talk, I, I know the Levi girls quite well. We've had a few podcasts and a few chats and stuff. And they, they tell a very similar story. It's um, And it's a tragedy, like... What's netball? Netball's after fishing the most played sport in Australia. Is it's that like the third most played sport, <coughs> and it's the top female sport like played in all of Australia. It, and it, isn't that just? Does that kill you to then know that like a rookie's getting paid forty eight grand oh, to at like the highest level of the sport? It blows my mind. And I think obviously like stoked as a female that female sport is like absolutely booming, but in terms of our sport, like kind of breaks your heart because you know a lot of kids now are looking mm. at you know, other avenues and different sports they can play. And so for netball, for so long, it's been kind of the leading women's sport in Australia. And I guess we've got a long way now. To, we're, we're, obviously, it's great for, you know, young females to be able to play whatever sport, but it's a challenge for us to be able to, how do we get there that, you know, young girls want to play netball. There's there's opportunities at the top level. For us, there's only 10 spots at the Swifts, where if you go to AFLW, there might be 30 players on the list. Yeah, gotcha. So the opportunity is like, where, like huge where we've got we've got eight teams 10 spots in each team it's 80 spots and some of them come internationally so it's like you know the opportunities are, are so small and so finite and i think you know players like me i've been there for 12 years at the swift so we want to make it a career so it's like how do you get those opportunities for young kids to be able to play and be full-time and get opportunities because there's not that many yeah so it's like, how do we get more teams? How do we get more sponsorship? How do we get more money coming in? So there's more opportunities. So young kids are like, yep, I want to be a full-time netballer because at the moment we're just not just not there yet. Do um, do you as a group of females driving netball have a plan for the future in that space, or you're not even consulted? Or yeah, it's interesting. I think the pay dispute and what went down with Netball Australia was kind of like a a red light in terms of, I guess, a red flag in terms of, you know we actually don't probably know the direction of where netball wants to be taken. Mm -hmm. Like I think for so long it's kind of, you know, I always describe like Australians love an underdog, right? Yep. So they love an underdog. But the Australian Diamonds have been, never really been an underdog. They've always been expected to win. Yeah, and when okay. we don't win the Commonwealth Games or we don't win World Cup, it's like, oh, why wow. didn't you win? And where I look at sports like the Matildas and, the, and you know, even the Rugby Sevens, when they were kind of went to the... Olympics for the first time, I was like, oh, they're, they're not expe they're expected to win. But when they win, it was like, whoa, like, this is unreal. Like, so for us, it's about finding ways to be able to, like, the international game is growing. Like, all all teams are, and players are coming over to Australia to play in our league because it's the best in the world. So it means that Jamaica are coming, England are coming, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, um, uh, Uganda are now coming. Like, we wow. played them in the international scene and, you know, only beaten by a handful of goals. So... It's about how do we get that, you know, and, and people watching, people coming to games because I feel like for so long it's been like, oh, we're successful. So success is enough. But it's not enough in the modern, modern era. Like there's so many sports and so many opportunities that you need more than just success to, to people want to play it, people want to watch it, people want to sponsor it, people want to be a part of it. So, yeah, there's a lot to go. Which type of companies are sponsoring netball? Um, so then obviously like with Swiss, we've got QBE who have actually been there for 18 years. Wow. They've been one of our... Like, uh, that's phenomenal for a female that's sport. That's a long term. It's a long time. They've awesome. just backed us from the start and seen us grow from the Sydney Swifts. And then when the New South Wales Swifts came on board, they've been with us ever since. So it's been huge. Um, obviously, you know, BSC have been with the Swiss now for a few years. Um, Suncorp, obviously, are the, the leading sponsors of, of the league. Um, but I feel like, for, for besides QBE, it's like, how to get sponsors that are going to stay on for Absolutely. a long time. And yeah. I know, you know, with the Origin Diamonds, we've been lucky enough to have Origin for, you know, I think it's about five years now, but that's huge because it's, it's a naming rights. So you don't yep. want to be Origin Diamonds and then be something else. Diamonds. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. It's a brand. Like yep. it's, it's who you affiliate yourself with. So it's about kind of having those brands that don't just come on for five minutes. It's like your family. Partners. Like it, it's, it's a part of who you are. It's your DNA. Like it's, it's, it's just a part, a way of life. Do you, do you get to talk with the the heads of corporate and those businesses to tell them where you want netball to go? 
I think it's interesting. I think last year probably took a stand. I know that Netball Australia have now got kind of a, a working group which includes um, three or four players from the, the Diamonds environment to actually work on that stuff mm-hmm. in, in terms of marketing, in terms of the sponsors they kind of bring on because for so long we were saying like, I guess it's different in club land because every week you kind of have a game, right? And then you go to the game, you go to post match functions, you meet your sponsors, you become family, you see them in the crowd, you wave, you know, yeah. you got that connection because, you know, for me as an athlete, I don't want to be part of a brand that it's just like, hey, can you get this brand, take a photo of it, put it in social media? Yeah. Because like, it's so, un- like it's not, like for one, it's not me, it's not authentic. Like I want to be able to be that family. Like it's like, not nah, like uh, it's so easy to take a photo with them or be a part of their family. Cause that's just who I am day in, day out. It's what I eat, it's what I drink, it's what I wear. And it's not like, oh, you know, can you put that on just in the photo and take a photo? Cause it's, it's not who I am. And I think netball in terms of it's hard because diamonds, for example, you're only, you're only a part of them for, you know, maybe eight weeks of the year because a World Cup or a Con Cup or a, so it's like, you know, trying to get those sponsors and meet those brands. And so we obviously had a group with them and they said to them, like, we want to be, it, we don't want just to be, hey, like, when you're with Diamonds, that's your brand, take a photo, that's it. It's like, how do we actually become like a family? How do we become like, they don't want to leave us. Like, it, it, you know, they know who we are as people. They know what we're about. It's not just these are diamonds. They're successful. They play hard netball. It's like there's so much more. Like we've got people that can play 12 instruments. We've got people that are, you know, doing amazing careers, like with their degrees. People that are doing like like the tie-dye project. They're doing um, projects for charity. Like So it's just more than just like, okay, put your name on the dress that's who you are. So I think it's been a challenge and it's something that now they've set up a group where you know, athletes can have a say in terms of all those areas of the business as well. And how do you hit that group? Are you voted in by the other players or are you... Um, so that group's been put up, where put your hand up kind of thing. It's okay. obviously who's really passionate about... Obviously, I guess in any any area of expertise, everyone's not passionate about something. Yeah. And then some people just want to go play netball. Some people just want to worry about, you know, their job and netball's on the side. Like, well, there's some you know passionate people about the sport. You know, there's next generation coming through. Some that are kind of near the end of their career that have been there for so long of like what can change. So, yeah, a few of the girls put their hand up and that are really passionate about d- different areas and so whether it's social media. Obviously, social media is the way, the way of the world, right? Gives you it's, your voice, doesn't yeah, it? Like it's, it's unedited by media. Yeah, like you can just touch people. You can show your story. You can yeah. you t- show who you are and you know I guess people have access. That you know, what, what's the first thing you do when you wake up usually? Straight you get up, you yep. go to your phone. Like yep. so, um, it's about you know. I guess for so long, as I said, I feel like netball's just kind of been that leading sport. But they need to kind of get the edge because we need more than that now. It, you need that you know connection. You need to share stories. You need to you know show who's behind that yellow dress or, or that red dress for Swifts. Tell me about it, like a, a, a an event. I, is it is it a good event to go to a netball game? Like oh, like I feel like especially for us, like the Swifts. So last year, I think it helped that we only won by one or two goals every game. Yep. So I feel like it made awesome it finish. Be, on, yeah. be on the edge of their seat. <laughs> Not good for you, but great for well, the crowd. And I feel like a lot of the time we just won. So yeah. everyone likes, you know, I remember there was a game um, we played the West Coast Fever. It was the final to get into the grand final. And I like I will just never forget like the minute after the game. Like, because it came down to we were losing probably for like 57 minutes of the game. We got it to a draw and then somehow we got a turnover and we held the ball for like a minute. And you could just hear like the chants, the crowd, like, and everyone's like, oh my God, how did you do that? And I was like, I don't know, it was just, you just feel so calm in that moment. We pass it around with six seconds to go, like, all right, shoot it, she shot it, we won't win. Like the crowd was electric, like I, I would just never forget it. And I think, you know, I've heard so much feedback, especially from Swiss games about, all the activations outside. It's not just now. It's not just you go to netball. It's just turn up, you know, at centre past three o'clock. It's you're there at two o'clock. You're doing the activations. You come in. It's entertainment. It's halftime stuff. It, it's and obviously when a game is going like that, it's just unreal. So yeah, netball is more than just yeah, you know, turn up, watch a game, leave. Yep. It, it's and obviously for us, like, um, you know, we have a ten thousand seat stadium, so we want to see ten thousand in the in the stadium every week. And for us, we're just over five thousand members now, which is our most ever so nice we want to get that to you know six thousand seven thousand where it's like all right let's how do, how do we push to a bigger stadium like how do we get fans in because when the stadium's full like it's it's electric like yeah, it's unreal that's epic what's um what's the televised side of it like 
do they do a good job of that? Because that's make or break, isn't it? Oh, it rolls abs- on TV. Absolutely. And I feel like um, we've kind of struggled. I'm sounding like I've never been to a game or never watched one, but yeah. I want to get your opinion you on have it. To, you have to yeah. come, come yeah. this year. But yeah. I think um, that's something that's challenged us. We've kind of moved around a lot. Yeah. Um, we've obviously, we were on ABC when I was watching and then went to Channel 10 and then we've been on 9 and, and now with Fox and KO. And honestly, like it, it's, it's tough because, you know, even for me, like I'm – an NRL fan, like I'm not an avid fan, but you know, on a Thursday night, I'll turn on the footy. Yep. NRL, um, AFL, same thing. I'll turn on Channel Seven. I'll turn on the AFL. I'll watch the Swannies play. Yeah. Like I may be doing something else, maybe working, I may be doing the washing, whatever I'm doing, but I've got it on. Yep. Because it's just like, and that's the thing. I think sometimes for us, we're only on Foxtel and KO, which they've done a magnificent job. Like they've brought shows we've never had netty shows before so they brought netty shows to fans they brought behind the scenes access they brought so much access for fans that they never got before yeah. they've you know told athlete stories but in saying that obviously it's a it's a pay it's a pay tv right and yep. obviously ko do ko freebies where i think we've got two games a week on that but i think you know i look at the nrl and i look at the afl where they've got fox but they've also got seven or they've got fox and they've got nrl so, you know, you have the, the access for fans, whether it's pay TV or whether it's free free yeah. to wear. So I think that's a, that's that's the push you want to get to. You want to be able to get people so invested in Fox and, and KO that then, you know, maybe nine or ten or seven come on board as well. So I've got both those channels. Because obviously I think at the moment, obviously, you know, I think some of our fa- – obviously we've got the 18 or the eight-year-old fan, but we've also got, you know, you know, Marg who's been there for 50 years, yeah. who's, who's loved the netball – but probably doesn't know how to use KO. Yeah. Probably yeah, doesn't know how call, to actually, yeah. So it's like, how do we get those fans as well watching? Because I think that's a struggle netball's had in terms of, if you go to a sat like I go to my local netball courts, there's 40 odd co- courts, they're all full, they're all playing, there's whistles going. How do we get every single one of those people tuning in every yeah. week? How do we get them to a game every week? Because as I said, like it's the most played female sport. Yeah. So we need those people watching the game because the more people watch it, the more money that comes in from from those channels, the more money it gets to invest in sport, and it's just like a trickle on effect. Come on, guys and girls, we need to watch the sport, get yeah, some money. You in need it. to watch it too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I actually, you know, the last game I went to it was a while ago. I went to the Com Games. Oh, loved it. It was so much. Which fun. game did you go to? Uh, final was against England. Or one against New Zealand. Was it England New Zealand? Uh, no. We played England in the final or Jamaica in the semi final. Nah, uh, it was England. I went to the final. Shit, that's really bad. That so England were a semi-final and then Jamaica were the final in Com Games. Semi-final. So, so England semi-final. was against semi-final. Semi-final, yeah. Final, yeah. There was like probably 20 people in the crowd going for us that game. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I did a little bit of cheering. But, <laughs> but no, that was, um, don't the, the Poms bring it though. Oh, How yeah. good are they? It's yeah. just outside to inside, like it's on. Yeah. They, they love sport, don't well, they? Well, we, our... Um, Nothing else to do with it. Our families either. were <laughs> in Birmingham watching and... They were getting heckled yeah. every day to the game. Whatever cafe they went to, they were just getting heckled. Yeah. Because the Poms just don't like the Aussies yeah. as well. So they are like, everyone knew us because, you know, obviously they were avid fans. Yeah. And they were like, we couldn't go anywhere without being heckled. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk about, let's talk about you for a second. So you've played 50 international games. Congrats on that. Thank you. That's a real milestone. Yeah. But let's. Let's t- that's the fun stuff. Let's talk about the shit part of sport, the injuries. You've missed some big games yeah. from injury. Yeah. How did you, as someone who's put it all in, given spare time to study, had to work to make a living, and pretty well much wanted to play for the, what's this called, a jersey? Yeah, the dress. The dress? Yeah. Is, it called, is, it, is, that, is that what you call a dress? Yeah. That sucks. You need something better. <laughs> Well, you're the marketing. Have you got your dress on? <laughs> I think we can do better. Yeah, you're going to have to be Should the run a competition. What, what should we call it that's, well, you know? Yeah. That's a male ball, male talking. Like, <laughs> hey, maybe it's an honour to wear that dress now I think about it. I'm going to just take all that back. back. Let's edit and, that, cut that. No, no, leave it in there. I deserve what I get for that. But, you know, it's uh, the dress. Just, I yeah, know, it doesn't really sit does well does with it you. Sit. What do the guys play in then? Well, they have a, a single and a dress? shorts. I don't know what they call it. The wow, really? You don't know what the guys' I don't know what outfits they actually call it. The s- yeah. Well, we've got, we got a few basics to cover here in yeah. Netball, don't we? I have to ask the Kelpies. That's what they call Is that what they call The Kelpies. Yeah. I watched it. That's pretty fast. Yeah, they've only come onto the scene the last kind of... Obviously, they've played... What do you girls think of that? Oh, well, I think 
for our game, like we do need like I feel like for so long it's been female dominated, and yeah. I think you know we obviously as a as a as a top tier we want funding going into us. We want obviously our opportunities of travelling overseas and those international games, but I think we need new markets, and I think bringing the male um, counterparts in it obviously brings a new market to our game as well. So because it's really popular executive level to play mixed netball and stuff as a group and a team. And, and I feel stuff. like it's always been so, uh, just play socially. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's been like every. Yeah. Every corporate office has got a team. Social team. Yeah. Where it's never been like, oh, it can be a profession. And yeah. that's what obviously the men are, are going for. They want, you know, like AFL women and now AFL. Like it's, they're going for it. And NRL, W. How's and the pay parity between the male and females in netball? Oh, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, the if, girls if, are looking, yeah, one yeah, for the, the girls. girls hey? The girls are looking one good. One for the girls, I like <laughs> it. That's awesome. So <laughs> back to... um. Playing for the dress <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. Uh, I had a daughter too. You think I'd be okay with playing for the dress? Um, hey, Sam, I hope you will. Um, <laughs> hope listening. The, the big thing here is I, I really want to get my head around like, and I, I understand I've been in sport a long time, so and I know a lot of SNC coaches, a lot of rehab coaches and all that, and I understand the process for what's happened to the boys in contact sport for years. What's it really like for you as one, one of the faces of netball when you get injured, seriously injured, what what is there for you to get back to be that athlete? Yeah, I think, um, like, to be honest, like, I did my ACL, like, I think it was my, it was 2013, so it was, like, my first full year of Swifts, like, it was my first contract. Um, first so, year. Yeah, signed, signed for two years, did all the pre-season, and this then... This is on $11,000 a year? Yeah, 11000 you did your ACL? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was at uni at the time. Oh, so you weren't even working at the time. I wasn't time. even working. No. I was at home. I thought this is the best hobby. Like, I used to work at Video Easy, so I thought Video. <laughs> video There's a brand I haven't heard <laughs> for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Video Easy or playing for Swift. I don't want to pick. I think the Swift. You probably took the right one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I remember at the time, like I was so naive. I had no idea like what was in for the rehab and to get back. But I was. I was really fortunate in terms of um, the, the SNC and the two SNCs that were working at the club at the time were just, I'd known for like, they through my in-Swiss years, through my underage um, development, they were there. And so they're like my mates. And so when they saw me go down, obviously like I could see the heartbreak on their faces that had signed my first contract at the Swifts. And um, I remember we had a really strong age group. So a few of the other girls had to move into state. And so I was the one that got the Swifts contract and they were devastated. and. Um, I just had no idea, like I was so naive as to, you know, I'd, I'd um, just played um, my first contract, got got picked in the Australian side, like debuted for Australia. I, got, I think I got MVP in my first ga uh, second game. I was like, oh, so oh this good. is sick. <laughs> like, how good is this? <laughs> like, you know, I'm going away with my idols. Like, oh, I'm with my roommate. Like, my roommate <laughs> got Nat Meadows and Kim Green. And then the next year I got up and then, yeah, do my ACL and I thought, oh, my God. And. It was just so isolating. Like I, I play a team sport for a reason, but and it was right. It was the second. Um, I did a training, but it was before the second round of the season. So the girls obviously had to go on. They were worried about you know the the the, the, the rounds. They weren't worried about me, and so it was really isolating. I was very fortunate though. Obviously, I didn't have all the shebangs. I didn't have the game readies at that time. And I remember I, um, I had to because our physio is not full time, so we had to. I had to get dropped off at her clinic. By my, well, I couldn't drive after the surgery, so I had to get dropped off at the clinic by mum and then go to do rehab and then wait for mum to finish work, get picked up. Oh, no um, Or dad to get picked up because, Is this yeah. how you got your degree? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of study? <laughs> Lots of study yeah. because, I, yeah, they weren't, the physios weren't full-time. So, so wow. I had to get dropped off at their clinic where they worked part-time as well, um, stay there until mum and dad picked me up, get dri driven home. Obviously, then when I could drive after a few weeks, I drive myself. Um, I remember, yeah, I, had to go, I, went, I started studying full time during that period because uh, I needed something else mentally because it was tough, like watching the girls train, um, pl then play on the weekends. Had to go to that would have been so hard. Oh, it was, I was, I was only How old were you? I was 19. 19, um, wow. And I thought, yeah, obviously, everything kind of <coughs> rolled really fast for me and then that happened. So, but the two guys, Jason and um, Lucas, were just unreal. Like, I remember they, I used to go to Parramatta Pool because um, we obviously didn't have facilities like a pool or anything to do rehab, so they used to come around a pool with me. One used to get in the water and race me. The other was out, you know, doing my rehab, telling me what to do, like running or swimming, whatever I was doing. Um, they were with me there every step of the way. And I, if it wasn't for them, like, I have no doubt, I wouldn't, like, it would have been so much harder. Like, 
um, they didn't have to do what they did. Like they yeah. were part time in netball as well and worked in Swiss, but they would let me come in whenever. And I remember days they weren't very good with tears though. So some days I'd come in and I'd have a shit day and I'd just cry for no reason. And they're like, all right, we'll give you we'll give you ten. We'll come back in ten. I was like, all right, <laughs> give me ten. So I come back and get through the session. But um, they got me to do like a a um, like a video every month, and they they write down questions and. I watched it back after 12 months. I was like, whoa, like the development and, you know, the, the shit cool days. cool idea. Yeah, the shit days, the good days, like why you did it, like <coughs> why you're getting back, like what are you playing for? And So, yeah, it was tough. I didn't have the full-time facilities. Like I was having to go everywhere or go to that and then I had to go training as well. And so I was doing – it was it was actually – we always not laugh, but like when you're in rehab, it's 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 more than when you're actually not in rehab. Like yeah. you're doing more because like, you're doing outside your session then you go into the girls' session – doing their training like so yeah it was tough but um I had amazing people like I was very fortunate to have amazing people and then that was my first big injury and then um I've been quite lucky touch wood but that I've had like little things Let's here just lean forward and touch yeah them. touch yeah. them there yeah. I've had little things here and there like you know <laughs> kick me out for a, a game or two um but nothing major and then obviously my ne my next major thing was I tore my calf at con games um and the, it was just about just shit timing like I'd I had done my ACL 2013, so I missed out on 2014 Com Games. I would got dropped from the squad in 2017, got back in the squad 2018, but didn't get selected for the Com Games in 2018. Finally, 2022, I'd been selected. I was playing some of my best netball. Like, honestly, my numbers, I was like, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, there was a new coach at the Diamonds. Um, I was just loving it. I was I was in the team. Like, I'm, it, it was all gone. Like, I was like, I'm here, I'm at the Com Games. And in the last session before we moved into the village, I started training, I started warming up, got on the court, and then I was like, oh, my calf's tight. Thought nothing of it, kind of came off. I was like, oh, I think my calf's a bit tight. Like, can you rub it? So I go, oh, we'll just rest you for the last training session. No no need to, you know, strain or whatever. And then I got into the village, and the village has, like, its own doctors. And so obviously I was already on edge. I was like, you know, because they kind of said to me, if it's anything major, like, we're going to have to pull you from Com Games because we'll have to take you... Well, that's a big decision we'll for a young human to make, yeah. isn't it? And I was like, oh, and so I met the doctor, and I'm all optimistic, and he's like, anything on the scan, you're out. And I obviously... Don't scare me. I was <laughs> like, oh, my God. So I was like, oh, my parents are about to step, step on a flight to come over here to watch me. My first Com Games, and I'm going to be ruled out before it's even started. I was like, could this be any shit? I like, could this... Why? Like, why is, why is this happening? So I got a scan done, obviously, like... They're whispering over there, and I was like, "Oh, it's obviously something on the scan." Like the physio comes over and she's like, "All right, we'll talk about it when we go back to the village." So I come back, and I remember it was like midnight at the village, and I'm sitting in the, uh, the overnight eating peach. I'm like, "What's it could get worse?" <laughs> like blah blah. And I'm obviously upset, and she's going, "She's like, um, oh, there's obviously there's a slight tear in your um, a slight strain, sorry, in your calf. <coughs> Any given day, I'll give you a week, but obviously, come games, you got eight games in ten days." And I'm going, so... Strap it. Yeah, I was like, so... <laughs> she's like, look, if you can prove to us that you've proven fitness for the next four days, we'll, we'll put you in. They gave you four days or you got tested every day for I four days? I got every test every day, four days. I had to give a team in within those two days. Because once you put the team in, you couldn't change it. Oh, wow. So the coach said, no, I'm going to back you. Like, And I, I was, I'm forever grateful for that because could have easily dropped me for someone that was obviously fully fit, yeah. ready to go. And she's like, no, nah, I've picked you for a reason. You hear more than just for your netball. You're like you're a leader. That's what awesome. you give to the team, and I was like, wow, like I can do this. And so I missed the first game. I played the second game. It was, it was so good. I was like, I'm flying. Play, play the next game. I only, I was only, only played 15 minutes the first game. I was going to play oh, seven minutes. Sorry, I was going to play 15 minutes the next game. I was flying, and then so it felt like someone kicked me in the leg. I turned around and I was like, yeah, tore it. And then, um, yeah, so I was out for the rest of the tournament. Um, obviously devastated. Like, I think the physio was more devastated than me because she knew how much it meant to me. But I just remember I had like about an hour of crying in my room. And then I said, all right, I'm not having us win silver. And then everyone say, oh, it's because you took 11 players. Um, Paige wasn't fully fit. It's her fault. She was the reason. Couldn't <coughs> rotate your bench. Like, I was like, no, nah, I'm not having that. So I remember <coughs> just going away and I just became like the coach for the mid quarters. I was just, and like on the bench, I was just like like yelling the whole time. Like obviously encouragement, like I'll go away, do PA on different teams. I'd be like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. And like, oh, I remember after it, 
um, Stacey, the coach, was like, oh, we, we wouldn't have won that without you, like yeah, what you gave. Yeah. And I just said, like, oh, as much as it, like, hurt selfishly, like, obviously, the, like, you want to be on that gold medal match. You want to be, like, I couldn't even run on the court after the game. Like, I had to get, like, pretty much carried and I was, like, hobbling because I couldn't run. But for me, it meant so much more because, like, it, it taught me as a leader, like, you, you aren't just who you are on the court. Like, you are so much more. And um, it was shit timing, like, to say the least. Like, couldn't have come on the worst time. It was probably my last Com Games. Like, I don't know if Com Games is even going to go ahead in 2026 at the moment. But, um, yeah, it taught me so much about myself. And that medal probably means more to me than most of them because, you know, it taught me that you, you can be a good person, you can give as a teammate. And, like, seeing... Maybe having people say to me like, "Oh, we wouldn't have won it without you." Like what you did was so selfless. I was like, "Well, that, that, sometimes that means more to me than how good is that?" You know, you're the hero. You got, you yeah. got the intercept pass. You got the last shot. It's like, well, like I've actually made an impact on people to make them better. And yeah, even though it was tough, um, and but I'll remember that forever. Can we step back to the? Because yeah. that's the old uh, war in the crossroads moment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? What actually made you? think that and do that because it would have been very easy to go fuck this i've got a torn calf i'm going to go feel sorry for myself i'm going to go get it fixed i'm going to you know wh what made you like you did it yeah. so it's in you i get yeah. that but what was that moment you had that made you step up and do that i feel like there was a few i feel like um one that was obviously like uh, my family had come all the way over the other side of the world to watch me and obviously i know they'd come over like even if I played one minute, like they'd be there to watch me in that moment. But I was like, I cannot be moping around and feeling sorry for myself. And when right now I'm actually living my dream, like I'm, I could be fully fit. I absolutely love what you're saying right now. Like I could be fully fit and not even play one minute <coughs> of the Com Games because there's better players than me. So I was like, because in that final game, the final two games, some girls didn't actually play a minute because we had our seven, yeah. we had our rotations. And I was like, I, I can't be moping around feeling sorry for myself when people are in the exact same boat as me, sitting on this bench, giving everything they've got, and they're actually fully fit. Yeah. I think the biggest moment for me was like, I've had probably teammates in the past that have just like, I call them like vacuums or like energy suckers who have just like, just, you know, just like going into a room, you're like, oh, like when you walk out, you're like, oh my God, I couldn't, the energy just zapped out of me. And I didn't want to be that person. Like yeah. I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, Paige is just like, moping around, upset, and I had a roommate as well. Like, so it was her first Com Games. I think she only played like a couple of caps for Australia. So it was her first experience, it was my first experience. I was like, I want this one to be one to remember. And so I think it was that moment of like, nah, like I cannot be selfish, I can't be, like these girls cannot be worrying about me. Like they've got a gold medal to win. Like yeah. we were under so much pressure as well. Like we had lost the Com Games by one in Gold Coast. We lost the World Cup in Liverpool, um, Liverpool by one to New Zealand. So I was like, we need to win this back. So we're under immense pressure, new coach, like everyone's like, can we do it? And so I was, and I, I just didn't want to walk away and have, I guess I never really liked to say outside people, the media, but I didn't want people to be like, oh, it's because Stacey let Paige play. It's because she backed her. If she had taken a fully fit player, they would have had rotations. They wouldn't have been fatigued. They would have won that gold medal. So I just didn't want that to be kind of, taken away from what we'd done what we'd done and so i felt when we won it was like i was like thank you. because it was just like <laughs> oh like i couldn't i didn't want i felt like i felt like if we had a loss yeah, i would have felt pure guilt that i even let them pick me when someone was fully fit and we didn't know if i was going to make one game two games or the whole week we yeah. had no idea it was a risk they were taking yeah nice nice is that um is that you in life like with everything you do now is that your approach to everything? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I've been around. But you're always smiling. <laughs> you're always happy. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely. Um, I describe myself as like, um, which I feel like is the best thing about team sports is that you probably wouldn't know if I'm having a really shit day, and you probably wouldn't know if I'm having the best day of my life. Yeah. I feel like um, I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm pretty structured. I like to walk into a room. I like to give every single person the equal, the equal energy and the equal kindness and give myself as you know I don't like um you know I don't want people to go well well oh Paige is here like all right she's all right today or you know I feel like everything I do in life um you know I remember my ATAR score like my brother did really well at school and so I was like all right I'll compete with you like I'll I'll give everything nothing I do is half ass is is the thing I think I I just want to go out there and I've never 
the star of the show. I'm never the one everyone talks about, but I want to be the one that is that good, that good person that is a good teammate that, you know, I never leave a stone unturned. And when I walk away, I'm like, all right, gave that, whether it's, you know, what I do in life or whether it's study or whether it's netball, I want to be the, like, yeah, just walk away going, yeah, I gave it everything. Like I didn't do anything half-assed. Yeah, I love that. I truly, truly love it. And I mean, that's why you're, you are the athlete that you are. Let's talk about if Paige had a, a second chance back in ha- 1992, you were born? born yeah. Yeah. Jeez, I was a few years out of <laughs> school. I was probably thinking about starting body science back then. Wow. I am old. Any, anyway, I see I'm You're so You're making old. me feel young when all I feel old in my sport now. I've even forgotten what I was going to Oh, I know I was going to say. Now, now with where sport's at and y- you go back, no, no, you, you go through the process now. What sport do you think – Paige would be chasing if she was a young let's let's talk about an 11 12 year old and I know it's probably you're probably thinking shit I should say netball but <laughs> let's just say that's you can't say netball what sport would you be chasing right now oh look uh is if it's based on the skills that I've got I've probably got no other skill in another sport um oh look I think netball was was definitely something that was I guess blooded into my family like mum was involved in our local club she umpired she played she coached on the committee oh, like cool. yeah so it was something that I kind of just um did like fell into <laughs> and I think I was, I was a really shy kid and like I'm still not like the most overt person I think what netball has is that like you can't have like one hero like you know in basketball you can kind of have like one person yeah. that you know shoots every point or in footy you got like everyone that scores the tries or like you can't like yes people score goals in netball but like without us they can't actually score goals yeah. or like without us defending they can't actually stop the ball like and so it was like one of those sports where i felt like when i started it was like this is like the ultimate team sport like so you can't and because i wasn't so over i didn't want all the attention on myself so i was like all right i can't i don't have to be like you know a hero or you know, I feel like that's kind of what brought me out of myself because it was kind of like, all right, yeah, I can be yourself and, and you have a part in this kind of like role. But yep. look, if I could pick any any sport, right? Like, and, and if it wasn't based on the skills that I have, and if I could... Let's just base it on the fact that you're an athlete who's got a dog attitude, you'll yeah. bite and go. Yeah. What look, would I would love to be a surfer. Really? Like... Chasing you got the right hair colour for a lot of, <laughs> you know, you've got that sun bleach, yeah. you know, that I've been to the beach look thing look, going. I used to Good love, skin colour, look like you're a surfer. I used to love I wearing you could do a it. rash shirt when I was younger. Did you really? Like my tan line. <laughs> like mum would, have to, mum would have to rip off the rash shirt. Kids love rashes now. They're like, oh, see all these mums putting <laughs> rashes on kids. Let the kid have some sun. Yeah, mum had to rip my rash shirt off because she's like, you cannot have, like I used to have a t-shirt tan. Like it was yeah. that, that's like your other part of your body needs to see the sun like you need vitamin d so i feel like i love the beach i love like, have you surfed before um no like i've surfed but not not you wouldn't see surf. me getting barrels okay oh, you'd see good. me on the whitewash yeah <laughs> we're on a mail then are we yeah, yeah yeah big board big board um but yeah look if i could be good at surfing like, i think it'd be a sick lifestyle yeah like it would be wouldn't it yeah just traveling the world you got to carry a lot of surfboards though yeah it'd be sick though like look, like just like you know, waxing it up, like putting your sponsors on it. There's like, nothing better than waxing a new surfboard. Oh, like I think it'd just be so sick, and like it'd be so individual as well. Where I feel like netball is like you got the team dress, like you can't. The only good thing about netball is you can. Netball. You you, you 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 can score it. Yeah, Surfing yeah. is really. Well, it's very. It how's is the very, judges feeling on the day? But it is. But there is so much like subjectivity in netball as well. Like, okay, who's good? Who's not? Like, yeah. who to your rights? so different like one coach like growing up one coach you're average like i remember um growing up through my like development years one coach said like you'll never make it and i was like yeah my mom's like well we'll shut playing shout them out now fuck them who was it yeah well and they they, (laughs) for so for for so long they never hate why why do people even say that to you like encourage you to play the sport get you in it keep keep girls in sport you know what i mean like wow and then when i made my first state team keep boys in sport too but yeah (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's true because like, there's a massive study that say like 15, when girls hit 15, 16, yeah, game it's over. just like, phew, yeah, because there's other things, a lot there's of pressures. social, there's mm. pressure, there's yeah. you know, everything being a Emotional. Female. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things happening. Yeah. That girls don't boys, play. We're, we're old and we're still trying to get to that position <laughs> yeah. where we grow up. Still trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to ask a question, which is, is the young girl who may have been already given coaches said that to you, you guys don't make it. I'd love to know. 
Oh, look, I think at the time, like, I was, like, it really kind of went over my head because I was kind of like, well, I'm probably not going to play for Australia. Like, I'm probably... Proved him wrong. And I'm probably not that good because... Proved him wrong. Yeah, and I think now it's, like, I think it's just been... Like, to me, it's, like, being happy with who you are and where you're going. And I think everyone has their own opinion. And even to this day, like, there's coaches out there at the best level that probably think I shouldn't be where I am or I shouldn't be in this team or I shouldn't be vice-captain or I shouldn't be co-captain. But it's, like, if you believe it and you believe in yourself, I think that's massive for me because I probably didn't believe in myself to be honest, until the last couple of years. And, and that's why I, I don't want my career to end because I feel So like you're 50 Australian games deep and you've only just started believing yeah. yourself in the last couple of years. Yeah. Stop it. So I, I played two games for Australia and then did my ACL. That would have been hard. Got pulled back in, came in for the World Cup because someone else did the ACL. Came in as a young kid, played in Sydney, played in the World Cup, won it. And I was like, this is sick. Yeah. Then got dropped. Got, went to tours. I was the thirteenth person. Went went to the UK, didn't get didn't get in the twelve starting side. Got dropped from the squad again. Got in, played a few games. It wasn't until twenty twenty two. So in twenty twenty one, we got a new Australian coach, and I said to myself, "All right, it's a new opportunity. It's a new book. I'm either gonna be in her twelve, or that's probably gonna be the end of my Australian career, because." In the, in the Diamonds, obviously, you have your kind of seven and an eight and then you build your team around it. And her first series, I didn't get a game. So they took the whole squad of 22. I didn't get in the starting 12 once. And I went back to Swifts and I said to my coach, I want feedback from her and I want to know what I can do. So I got one shot. So I got feedback and I said, yeah, I want to play, I want to play with Liz Watson, who is, the Australian, uh, who is the Australian captain now. I said, I want opportunities at the camp with her. Because she's, she's the Australian wing attack, I want to be the Australian centre with it. And so I went to camps, played a few games with her, went over to the UK and I said, I remember saying to mum, if I start this game, I've got 15 minutes to prove that I can be this combination with her. Because if it doesn't work, I know she's going to pull me off and she's going to put the next centre on. And I remember the, the 15 minutes and we killed it. And yeah. I was like, yes, <laughs> nice. yes, here we go. And I remember from that moment though, I was like, yep, she's gonna believe me. She's gonna back me. And I just needed that, that person. I feel like at Aussies that I'd been dropped, I'd been in, out. And I was saying to someone earlier today at the shoot that I can play center wing attack, wing defense. And so when I went to World Cups, I kind of felt like I got selected because I could play three positions. I was like, all right, we've got eight games, 10 days, you're fit. We can play you, swap you, rest that person, rest that person. But I was never there because I was like, nah, you're bloody good enough. Yeah. Like you deserve. And I was so it wasn't until Com Games I, I was like, like when the phone call happened, I was like, I'm not actually nervous because I feel like I back myself. I back that this phone call is going to go good. And then obviously when I did my did my calf, it was horrible. But I think that was the first time I was like, yeah, I deserve to be in this Australian squad. Like I know who I am. I'm confident with who I am. Like I don't have to be the overt person as a leader or, you know. Obviously from Com Games, I know that they see me as that leader and I'm not the over, the person that talks all the time or, you know, but I am who I am. I, I give people confidence. I, I'm, I'm kind, I work hard. I, I put my head down, I, my bum up, I just work and I lead by example. So I feel like that gave me the confidence in who I am and, and then that translated onto court being just backing myself. I just want to clap you right now. <laughs> I just want to clap. Like. <laughs> Thank you. If we can just go back to Matt's question about Oh, it's, it's bullying, like bullying by a coach. How old were you when that happened? I was like 12, 13. <coughs> wow, that can change an athlete or a, that can change a person's life. Oh, absolutely. And I remember, like, I do a lot of coaching with um, young kids now and, um, like, so much of it obviously is skill. Yes, you've got to be skilled and you've got to be fit. But a lot of it comes down to believing in themselves and, you know, I can see the kids when I give feedback of, you know, they go inshallah or get upset or and one comment can absolutely break a young kid and... Doing it at 12 or 13 is very harsh because they don't know who they are. They're still finding their feet. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I the way that the kids grow up now, it's like social media. It's it's media. It's it's, it's people's opinions. And so you wake up every day and these kids looking at like, oh, I want to be like her or I want to be like them or I want to look like that or I want to have that or I want to buy that. Where I, did, I didn't even have that growing up where it was even that was even tough back then. But now there's so many more pressures on young kids and I think a comment like that could just just break you, not just in sport or in netball, but in life and, and, and how oh, you tackle things. change a person's path dramatically. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know, it's, it's a tough one because most coaches do it for nothing. You know, they, without mums, dads, aunties and uncles, we don't have sport, sport. in Australia. And 
you know, I had to coach my son's soccer team <laughs> one year. I'd never been to a soccer game. I just made them really tired. <laughs> <laughs> Run a few laps. Yeah, I just had them running everywhere. But it, would, it used to kill me because, and I'm talking young footy. Yeah. They get in kick, and an airplane had come over. They'd all stop and look up. <laughs> Easily and, distracted. And for a dad that thinks their kid can be a pro athlete, <laughs> you, know, you just want to go out there and slap heads, but you can't. You got to go out there and talk the kids into it, get them back into it. Hey, let's play footy, and and we're talking the real the little kid stuff. But and and there's no training. There's no. So I get that, yeah. but. If you're going to play in sport and coaching and that, you've got to understand it's not about you. Yeah. It's really got to be about the kids. Yeah. I right. think it's hard as well because, you know, as a person, you sometimes you, you're competitive, right? Mm. And so sometimes your competitive juices come out rather than, you know, like trying to get the best out of each each kid because each kid's going to be different. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I, I, I'm, look, I'm not one for participation awards. Yeah. That's not me. Like, there should be a winner in, yeah. my, in my life. But Don't worry, I'm competitive. Should, yeah. <laughs> The loser doesn't need to be the negative side, though. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what I probably, when, when I hear of young kids getting that, I just find it devastating. Like, it's, um, and there's nowhere for them to go to talk about that type of thing either, is there? Or they get on social media and get peppered over it or whatever. It's, it's a tough gig for, to, I'm so glad I'm old. <laughs> I just get to write off I'm old and grumpy and dumb. <laughs> but I, I, would re I would really feel for, like, even you as elite athletes now, I mean, and I, I've, you remember, I, we first sponsored the Roosters back in 2002. That was just not long after you were born. <laughs> <laughs> and so back then, you know, we didn't have phones or anything or any of that crap. You know, now, yeah, it must be, I mean, obviously you're a sensible human, I get that, and there are non-sensible humans in sport. But it must be really hard that you can't do anything now without a phone being pulled out everywhere you go. Oh. Even just sitting down having dinner with your friends and people come up and go, can I have a photo? Oh, absolutely. And I think, as you said, like everything, you know, our whole job is, I guess, performance. And so you're judged on every single thing you do and whether it's on the court or off the court. And, you know, obviously you can't have a game without there being millions of comments written about, about you. You should never be judged by one game. Yeah. And I, I can tell you that, like, y you know, you, you try not to read it, but it's in, it's in your face, yeah, right? Exactly. Every social media post. And so you have 50 good comments, but there'll be one, one negative one. one and that's, the one, that's the one you yeah. focus on. That's the one I'm like, on. That's the one you're going to read. That's taking the space <laughs> in my head for a while, that one. Yeah. Yeah, and I just think, well, I obviously. Do you get coaching for that? Yeah, we do, we do social media things, but a lot of it is, you know, stay away from it or, or mute the <laughs> sites or whatever. But, you know, people can DM you now. There's so much access to... Yeah, it is. You know, when I was growing up and I went to a netball game, you, you couldn't just go and get on Instagram, I'm, I'm going to DM Paige Hadley and tell her she's a shit, she's a shit netball or, yeah. or, or she's got really pretty hair or whatever it is, you know. Like where now it's like so accessible, like, and kids just think it's like the norm. Yeah. Like where I'm like, it's not the norm like you you don't just get access to people so i think and it's hard it's everywhere and and you get all you can get all the training you can but you are a human at the end of the day like you are an elite athlete but you are a human like yeah. you have a life outside and it doesn't just impact you like your family read it like your partner reads it your, your dad reads it your, your grandma reads it like you know and it's hard for them when they're reading about their granddaughter or their daughter and it's you know negative things or they're this because they are the people that see everything you go through behind the scenes. They see the heartbreak, they see the sacrifices, they see not going to weddings or missing family events or, you know, not going out with your mates because you've got to get to bed and you've got to eat this. And they're the ones that see all the sacrifices yeah. where, you know, social media or the outside influences only see this small part of, you know, what you do actually every week to get to a game. Like, they, fans don't see what I do in terms of coaching and, and work and sleep and eating and all that you're doing. And you've got all the media commitments too because you're at the top of the level in those spaces too, aren't you? So does that take a lot of your time in netball? Yeah, um, I think like it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I think me, social media or media and social media can be more in netball. Yep. I feel like, um, as we said before, I think it's definitely, obviously it's a growing platform that we need to expose. And um, But for me personally, it's, it's awesome having brands like, BSC and for me like ASICs and stuff wanting to be on board and wanting to support you as an athlete and as a brand and because like to be honest without those brands like we wouldn't be able to do what we do like yeah. both financially and and as, a, as an athlete like you rely on it and I was saying to Taj earlier like um, I guess netball and a lot of those sports are I guess are, are seen as like good sports but that sometimes they're very like it's hard to like break into like 
you know, the markets in terms of like, now nah, this is a good brand to work with. Like this is, we're, we're powerful. Like we're fit athletes. Like we're, we're, we're not just like, it's not a non-contact sport anymore. No, exactly. Like it is contact. Like it, it is hard. Like it's hard on your knees. It's hard on your body. Like it's not just like, or like run around, land, like throw. There is hard hits. There is contact. Which people like, saw your body language. Honestly, then. <laughs> like throw on camera. Like it, it is physically demanding now. Like it is, and like I always, I actually joked about our last Aussie camp. I was like, if my Aussie camp was like this on day one, I don't think I'd still be playing. Now, yeah, is thirteen right? years later. Yeah. Because thirteen it's, it's years tough. later. Yeah, like I debuted. You look yeah. not much older than that. <laughs> I know. I said today at the shoot, they're like, "How old are you?" And I was like, "Oh, 31. They're like. I thought you were like 24. I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. It's that surfer lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I so Nepal, in Nepal's an anti-aging drug, just so everyone knows. <laughs> if everyone wants to know what the secret here is, it's netball. <laughs> so, Not on the knees, though. It's like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, well. WD-40. We can do a knee comparison when we can get up later, like when you're trying to straighten me up. So, uh, your managers, who are they? Um, Ignite. Ignite. So if somebody wants to come and talk to you about getting involved because they like the sound of what you say, yeah. they just contact Ignite or they hit you on Insta on a DM. Obviously, you'll answer that too. Yeah. What's your Insta account? Yeah. Pagey Hadley is... Um, Can we spell that out? Yeah. P-A-I-G-E-Y. Hadley, H-A-D-L-E-Y. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, I've got my email through like Ignite. So page at ignitesports.com.au. Page at... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then otherwise Ignite have their own email um, and there's a few people that look after us. So Anthony Fields is my direct manager, but we've got people that look after um, behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, obviously they have even for that, I've had a, man had a manager for, for the first 10 years of my career. And um, you kind of got it in the first place because it was like, oh, you just need someone to go in and sign your contracts because I don't want to sit there and be told like, you're only worth $11,000. Yeah, fuck that. Let um, someone else do that. Crap, yeah. Eh? yeah, I and then, But now like there is so much more to just signing a contract with your sport yeah. like and and those guys have helped me you know get brands and and showcase who i am because you know it's hard sometimes you, you people probably only judge you of who you are as a netballer but you are so much more and it's about getting that out there and, and showing people um because i am probably pretty private in terms of like life and yep. um but i like having that as well i like being you know being able to switch off and and have that other life and, as well. and not just be like oh it's always paid to the netball or like yeah. it's you know, I am a mom, um, I am a, a daughter, a, a partner, a, an auntie. Like I am those people as well, and I can give time to that as well. That's cool. That's cool. Look, Justin, um, wrapping up. You also you do a fair bit of um, community work and charity work. Yeah. Do you want to shout out who you look after in that space? Um, yeah. So we obviously work a lot with um, the Kids Cancer Project through yep. the Swifts, and they're just unreal. Like uh, every time I go to like an event, um, you're just like blown away. Yeah. Like. I think like you get so caught up in your own world um, and then you go and um, you go to an event or you meet someone or you, you know, went to the Westmead Children's Hospital the other day and you're like, gosh, I worry about the most pathetic shit, to be honest, because, mm. you know, some of these kids and, and you know, are, set, are trying to fight for their lives and you know, you've got families that are in the Westmead Children's Hospital, you know, watching their kid. Like the other day I went there and... I was in the car park and this lady's like, oh my God, can I get a photo? Like, oh my God, like, I love you, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, take a selfie. And I was like, oh, what are you here for? And she's like, oh, my daughter just had a, had a first child. I was like, oh my God, like, how old? 10 days and just been um, diagnosed with spina bifida and going to oh, be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. And no. I was just like, I was like, how can I, how can you love me? Like, I was like, I would give anything. Like, can I help? Like, yeah. you know, can, I, can I donate something to, to raise money? Like, you know, and her daughter was 22, just had a firstborn, no. like, and I was like, oh, like, and she's like, thanks so much for coming to these and doing these things. I was like, honestly, I get more out of this visit than they'll ever get from yeah. me coming to here. Like, yes, we can put a smile on their face and we can make a, a, a difference, but like, it just puts life into like perspective. perspective um, yeah. And yeah, we do a lot with um, the Tie Dye Project, which is um, Amy Pimenta, who's a, a Australian diamond, also plays in the Melbourne Mavericks. Um, and her mum um, passed away with... Um, uh, cancer and she actually met molly who was in the Westmead children's hospital and so now it's all about tie-dyeing so every year we do tie-dyeing shirts scrunchies whatever and um and obviously netball is a big part of her community so all the netballers get on board and, and help and with the um team girls cup coming up in sydney it's a pre-season tournament but they do tie-dye patches and the giveaways and raising money to that every year so it's awesome. when that rolls up this year let us know because we're in oh absolutely yeah it's okay. um it's awesome and obviously like you know her being a netball, it's you know you don't you don't realize the community that you were yeah. involved in, and, um, and yeah, just being a, like a minute part of you know something even bigger. 
Yeah. Well, Paige, you're a beautiful human and you're a very, very inspirational, aspirational athlete. And thanks for sitting on the couch. No, thanks for having me. And thanks, honestly, for supporting the journey. I really appreciate the BC team and all you guys. I love coming up here and being a part of it. Oh, we love you too. That's why we stick you in train stations and stuff. <laughs> 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 or on the back of, oh, back of a bus. I've got a few on the back of a bus. How did that feel when you saw that? Uh, it was pretty cool about my, uh, my friends would be like, oh, are you that big? You're in the back of the bus, aren't yeah. you? I was like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's pretty cool. I get photos. A lot of them from Melbourne. Yeah. I remember my Aussie um, assistant coach was like, what are you doing? And I just see this photo on the back of a bus. I'm like, that's that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, even I, you my, know what? I've been doing for so long. I still love that when I see it. Yeah. I still go, wow, like that brand that I built is there and that athlete there is standing there with that brand. That is so cool. Oh, well, what have you done over the last 25 it. years is... Unreal. Mine's been easy. I'm just surrounded by good people. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're I, a pretty good person. If I so. tear something, everyone laughs and says, sit down, old boy. But you know <laughs> what I mean? You tear something, a, a team changes. Also, I'm enjoying um, your surf reports every day. Are you watching yeah. those, are you? Yeah, yeah, I am watching them every yeah. day. I get I'm like, of, you can't stop now. Yeah, I get a lot of whinges <laughs> from my old mates. I said, I can't read your text. I said, well, it's not that. You're not missing anything, really. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I love living on the beach. <laughs> hey, next time you're out, we'll go surfing. I don't think you want to we'll see try and get cowed up. I Come up next time. Hopefully, Callum's back. He's in Portugal at the moment. But I don't want to embarrass myself, but I'll give it a go. You won't embarrass yourself. <laughs> I, I have a question. You have a question? I, I've got one, but I'm really really, really excited with what you're discussing. Do you want to come and hit a mic so that we can hear it, or do you think? No, because I think it's something that you guys can definitely discuss between yourselves. Okay. What What can KO and you know some of the other network providers actually push more to try and gain more audience interest in fly rules? Yeah, I think um, the hardest thing with netball as well is that it's a kind of Commonwealth, it's a Commonwealth game, like game sport, and so we don't have like. What the, is that? Like I know America play it, but it's it's like you wouldn't know. Like you, I remember, like, you go you go through like the airports, and everyone goes, "What's netball?" Well, you know what? Can you, I tell you a funny yeah. story? And I'm gonna I'll get we'll get back to your thing. yeah. I was in Sweden because Sweden are associated with body science now. Yeah. And we were, we were talking about our, our marquee athletes and I mentioned you were netball and they all looked at me and they said, what's netball? And yeah. I've gone, ha ha, idiot, funny. And they've gone, no, what's netball? No, what's netball? And I've gone, shit, how do I, okay, it's basketball, but you don't bounce the ball. <laughs> and, no, and no backboard. <laughs> and there's no backboard. And I'm going to have to show you a YouTube clip right now. Yeah. And that's how I explained it. It was really bad. And that's that's what we get. And I think that's, you know, like the NRL going to Vegas, I think it's huge. And I think netball needs to grow the markets. Like but that. NRL's in the same position as netball in that space. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not a... No. Yeah, it's... Like, because um, I think as well, like I, I think I don't know how to do it. Like if I did, I would do it. But it's like I, I'm obviously watching NRL and like I, I like sport, right? But I could tell you kind of someone in every single team. Like I'd yeah. be like, oh, yeah. Tedesco, the yeah, Roosters, yeah. Uh, Latrell Mitchell, Rabbit. Like everyone, where I feel like other sports people wouldn't know. Like I get questions. Also, oh, like who do you play against? Or like I just feel like netballs. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. But I feel like um, I know Ko and, and Foxtel are really trying to ha trying hard to try and open to other markets. I know they're trying to um, share our stories where we never had access to kind of get to know. They've got to share the stories. That's yeah. what builds it. Yeah. Well, people have connection, the right? People one, behind once it. you f yeah. fall in love with someone or you connect with someone or you're like relatable to someone, that's it. Like yeah. you follow their journey. Like, you go on social media and I follow people. I'm like, why am I following them? Oh, because I like their kid or, you know, I like yeah. who they are as a person. So I know KO and Fox are definitely trying to get access, get more access where I feel like netball has been very like, you can't have access to change rooms. You can't do this. You can't do that. Where they want fans to see like how hard we train, what we do in the, yeah. in the change room, like how we communicate with each other. And I know this year they want to try and mark up the coaches because they want people to have access to kind of, and it's not just like, good job. Like there's actually like a lot that goes on. So I think it's obviously sharing our stories, you know, getting that connection with us as athletes, um, as a brand. But I think for us, it's about trying to go, bigger like i think you know we're trying to i know netball is trying to maybe go to the olympics in 2032 but without those big countries like we're not going to get there like there's not enough participation there's not enough males playing it there's not enough people watching it so 
Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I think it's definitely that education piece because, you know, I look at even like NRLW and there's players, well, we've been around for a long time, right? Like the Swiss have been around for a long time. But people probably could tell you NRLW players or AFLW players based on the media because they're on shows, they're on, you know, event, they're at events, like they're at things, they're always at things because, you know, if you get the troll Mitchell to go, you get an NRLW player to go. So it's like having access, getting education, getting players out there where I feel like netball probably is not at that same level where NRLW's only been around for not that long, but yet players are getting paid, probably what we're, we're getting paid if, if not more, getting sponsorship deals because of the media. Like they're out there. Yeah, gotcha. Like I saw, you know, yeah. Jess Sergis, she was from the Roosters. She's over there in Vegas. Like it's, it's, it's all those opportunities that, you know, we need to grow as, as the game and it's not just a prissy women's sport. Like it is a tough, physical, demanding, physical game. Like it's not just standard. Like blood that we still stand out of play. Like there's so much more to it now. Oh, I've often thought how, how could you market netball better? And the, the sad thing is I think you've got to turn it, the game around the game like the, it needs a like you look at what happened in vegas that was not really about the football games do you know what i mean it was about what was happening in vegas and oh i have spent no time on this not that you've brought that one out of the blue but <laughs> it wouldn't hurt yeah look i think the first thing netball needs to do is talk to the people that are funding netball <laughs> You know, what do you, what does body science think could be done better? What does ASICs think could be done better? What and does so they, they ever ask you <coughs> those questions? Well, not really. No. Which is, which is, I guess it's like as athletes, it's, you know, it's obviously frustrating because you leave the game in hands of, you know, obviously what you think is the experts, right? They're the best in the best that uh, uh, are marketing, uh, yeah. you know, empowering your sport. So as athletes, you're obviously... You know, personally, I'm trying to do everything for my brand. I'm trying to do everything for the sport. But ultimately, like, you know, NRL players aren't going to see you going, you should do this. Yeah. Like, they're living in their hands and they're powering, you know, they're seeing the vision of where they want that sport to go. Yeah. And so it's interesting because when you hear feedback like that, it's like, okay, well, how, like, it shouldn't really be up to the athlete just to be like, all right, I'm going to be the CEO today. I'm gonna, you should be talking to BSC about this. Or you should be... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess... The power's in the people. You put people together and you get power. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and power means you can do things. And yeah, it's even if like, this is going to sound, this could be the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> you know, imagine if the NRL, and I know you don't, you want to be an independent sport that grows and does its thing. I get that. Yeah. Okay. But imagine if the NRL next year made it about the NRL because it, they have to, but they also made it about Australian sport that they took some netball games over there with them and they talk talk is that the right word is that, is that even a word talk talk yeah talk, take. Talk, take take they included <laughs> 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 they included some other sports that, that, that they could help dominate because i i think the nrl it has it has to make the nrl better yeah because there's if you talk to the big wigs in sport like the really big wigs and i got some mates who play at the highest level like the US has one football, 330 million people. It only has the ability to have one football. We're 22 million people and we got three. Yeah. The future in football is not three codes. Yeah. It has to be one. We're not big enough. So you take away all the bullshit and pull the data aside. Australia will have one football code in the future. Yeah. And that's why the NRL is trying to do what it's doing right now. That makes complete sense because if they go to the US, the US works. If channels in the US get on board and televise it, it then gets into gambling and gambling is what funds the sport. Yeah. So you, you can bet on the NRL everywhere. It That's what funds NRL growth. Like I don't care what anyone says, that's the model that they do. Yeah. Netball's that, not doing that. I was gonna say that's probably something that's been um, definitely spoken about in recent about like gambling and that bringing money to Whether sport, you like yeah. it or hate it, yeah. it, it, I'm putting that aside. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's even like the, the new Olympics that are coming, the non-Olympics, the whatever, they, you know, I did a oh, podcast the, them the other day, I forget yeah. what they're called. And like, <laughs> you know what? If you put your hand up and say, I do that, compete against other people, do it, good on yeah. you. You know what I mean? But don't compete in sports. That don't do it. 
Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that, so I'm I'm open to the athlete, not yeah. the organisation. And I'm saying the same thing here. I don't think netball's doing enough yeah. to be an international sport. Yeah. And look, I'm going to be honest, I'm sitting on the fringes, on a couch, eating a burger, pointing fingers at netball right now. I get that. I probably sound like a real tool. But I'm, I'm always about building things. I mean, and I'm past worrying about money and all that crap now. Yeah. I'm, I'm about building stuff. Yeah. And I can see what the NRL's doing. Oh. Super smart. Not only did they get media trumped on any, there wasn't any other footballs talked about while they were there, but they've gone for the big channels in the US that introduce them into big gambling. Yeah. And that, that's what's going to make yeah. NRL survive. Yeah. They're, they're, mm. they're definitely a, a super smart move. Choice. Like ha- at the start of the year, literally, I think they said it was literally four <coughs> days after yeah. the yeah. at the same stadium. Yeah. And you know, you look at you look at women's sports. No one's saying that netball can't survive, but they're saying one of the football. I know we're going to I'm getting told to wind up. <laughs> NRL co- football codes can't survive all three of them, that can, and that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, but netball, come on. I know. The participation's there. The the kids are there. The grassroots. The is CEO there. roles actually um, open if you would like to go for it. I would be a terrible. <laughs> Terrible. You need someone like Cherie to be the CEO. Yeah. Like that, that's a Talk good to your CEO. Wife. Yeah, Talk exactly. To your wife. She's the brains. <laughs> I just colour shit in. Yeah. So we'll wrap this podcast up. Thanks, Ash. That was really nice. Yeah, we're still. I know you're going. Hurry up. I, I got you. So Paige is being told to leave. She's got to go now. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Paige. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for wrecking it, Ash. <laughs> great, Everybody, great Ash exit. wrecked it. Uh, what's your what's your insta account so i can tell people to dm you yeah. like for wrecking it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on legend you are you are a, a, an awesome human oh, and thanks. i'm so proud to have you as part of the bc family oh thanks for having me i love being a part of it yeah let's get you on a tram off a bus onto a tram <laughs> <laughs> that's it thanks guys oh thank you